Market Concorda and uh, good afternoon, Taoiseach. Taoiseach, I'd like to raise with you the matter uh, of Ukraine uh, this afternoon. Um, first of all, from the outset, I'd like to concur with your comments of last Friday that Putin will stop where we choose to stop him, and I think that's entirely true. Um, I wish in 2014, when he invaded Crimea and half of Donbass, that the international community, and Ireland included, uh, was more robust and more assertive in stopping him, because this appeasement that he got eight years ago has brought us to this position that we're in uh, at the moment. And I recall, teacher, uh, on the 10th of February last year at Leaders' Questions, you and I had an exchange where we said there was an 80% likelihood that Russia would invade once the Chinese Olympics were over uh, in two weeks' time. And he did. But crucially, what we said was that we should use this time wisely, and Ireland should use this time wisely to enhance our cyber security, our energy security, and to increase our ability to deal with a large influx of refugees, which unfortunately uh, happened as well. Unfortunately, Taoiseach, it's time to have another similar type conversation because there's now about an 80% likelihood of Ukraine launching a major counter-offensive in the next two to three weeks, likely targeting Crimea, and they're entitled to do so under the UN Charter, under the Self-Defence Clause. But my concern from Ireland's point of view is that a lot of the battles, a lot of the heavy fighting will most likely happen around the Zaporizhzhia nuclear plant. It's the largest nuclear facility in Europe. It has six reactors and it has already suffered a lot of damage from a conventional point of view. And the concern is that there might be a leak, either inadvertent or due to damage as a result. So I think we should use this time wisely between now and the start of the Ukrainian offensive to at least review our radiological monitoring service in this country to make sure it's fit for purpose. So I, I guess, Tisha, the question is, I'd be grateful if you could update the House on, on what the plan is and if there is a radiological incident and do we intend to upgrade our capabilities in the short term. And this, this isn't designed to frighten or scare anybody. On the contrary, it's an opportunity to provide reassurance and to make sure that our, our systems are, are fit for purpose. Thank you very much, Tisha. Thank you, Deputy Berry. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Deputy. I, I'm 100% in agreement, agreement with you in relation to uh, Putin. Um, appeasement has failed. Uh, I understand why sometimes people promote appeasement, um, but just as it failed in the 1930s and 1940s, it's failed here. Uh, Russia was allowed to control part of Moldova. Then it was allowed to invade Georgia and control part of Georgia. Then it was allowed to take Crimea, uh, and the West didn't act and didn't act sufficiently. Uh, nor did the wider international community. And as a result of that, Putin felt he had the green light uh, to invade uh, eastern and southern Ukraine, and that's what he's, do he's done. Uh, and he will only stop where we stop him. And that's why we need to stand with Ukraine uh, for as long as it takes, uh, and we will. Uh, and I do remember the debate, the exchange we had then about a year ago. Um, all the intelligence was telling us that um, uh, Putin was going to invade Ukraine. Um, I had hoped that the intelligence was wrong. Um, the British and the Americans have got their intelligence wrong in the past, um, and I'd hoped they were wrong on this occasion, but they weren't. Uh, they were spot on, uh, and the invasion began uh, after, the, after the Olympic Games uh, in February. Uh, and since then, we have been uh, updating and renewing our plans to deal with potential threats. Um, we believe that a nuclear or radiological emergency is highly unlikely, uh, and I want to reassure the public and the House that we believe it is highly unlikely and even if it does happen, it is unlikely to have serious consequences for us. Uh, but we have made contingency plans for it. And in fact, a training exercise was held in September uh, to test the nation's response to a nuclear emergency. It took place in the National Emergency Coordination Centre, not too far from here, where we practice the systems and procedures outlined in the National Plan for Nuclear and Radiological Emergency Exposures to ensure that the government and state agencies are prepared to effectively manage the response to a range of potential scenarios. The National Plan details Ireland's planning and preparedness for a national response to a major nuclear emergency. It sets out the trigger points for the plan to be invoked, it includes notifications to Irish authorities of nuclear, uh, of nuclear or radiological emergencies abroad. Um, and while this event is highly improbable, the government is aware of the impact that it could have on Irish society, businesses and the economy. It's a statutory requirement that nuclear emergency exercises are organised by the EPA. And the previous such exercise uh, happened in 2017, that's prior to the one in September. Such exercises are part of regular and prudent government planning for national emergencies and followed on uh, from exercises also held uh, a few months ago 
uh, to test a hypothetical response to disruption in our energy supplies. It is an unlikely scenario, but it is a low probability uh, and high impact issue if it does actually occur. Um, thank you for confirming that there is a plan. My concern, of course, is that does everybody who needs to know the plan, are they aware of it? And just to finish up, uh, Taoiseach, would you agree or would disagree that we do have the necessary resources uh, in terms of both equipment uh, and people to ensure that we, we do have a, a resourced implementation of this? And over to Easter recess, uh, Taoiseach, would you consider getting a brief, uh, you and your, your uh, appropriate ministers, uh, to make sure you're fully updated with the situation? Thank you very much. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. I, I, I believe that we have adequate resources, but I, I'm not sure what resources you would need, depending on how severe the event is. We don't believe that any event would be likely, uh, or that if it did happen, would, would have a major impact on Ireland. But we can't take that for granted. Um, and the Taunton and I, Taunton's Minister of Defence, and I have plans to uh, have a further briefing on this over these two periods. So um, that, that, that's something that, that, that is in train, um, and. We, ha we haven't quite gone to the extent of advising the public as to what they should do in the scenario. We do need to balance the, uh, the, the, risk, with the, with the risk with the threat and the response, but um, that's something we need to consider too.